Greetings to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Thank you for joining us today for our online worship service. We pray that this would indeed be a great blessing to you in your own walk in the Christian faith. In our announcements bulletin, which is always available for you to download, and indeed we do encourage you to do that so you can read through it completely and see all of the announcements. I only touch upon a few of them today, but there are some that I do want to make sure that you see. We have a voters meeting coming up January 31st. It happens after the late service, approximately 12.30 p.m. in the gymnasium at the school, and we would Greatly love to have you be a part of that. That way you can be part of the conversation of what's going on in the ministry here at St. Paul's. There's a uh, partial agenda listed in the bulletin, so you can look over that and see some of the things that we will be talking about in that meeting. Uh, church things, as we flip over to 2021, there are altar flower chart signups. Uh, that form is available at the school site now. It used to be at the downtown location. It's now at the school site, so be sure to sign up for flowers if you wish to do so. And then offering envelopes, those have also been placed out. A number of you have already picked yours up, but there are still some that remain. If you are somebody who wants them but have not come either to the downtown church or to the school and you need us to get them to you, just let us know at the church office and we would be glad to do that. There's an update in our announcements about the LWML Christ uh, Christmas Child shoe boxes that we packed here and sent abroad. They were sent and they were sent to Ukraine and Colombia. So we give thanks that those gifts that we packaged were sent to those places and we pray that for the missionaries that, that give them out to the children, that they would be a way to tell them more about Jesus, the Christmas child, that in addition to seeing the gifts that we have packaged, they would also receive that gospel message and rejoice with us. There are a number of uh, uh, other announcements uh, related to some of the things going on. There's a Bible class on Tuesday morning that you're invited to. Uh, it happens at the school site. There's information there. Ramsey Plus, that's continuing. If you haven't signed up and checked out any of the things on Ramsey Plus, we do encourage you to go to our website and do that. There's a lot of great resources there. We're about halfway through now, I think, with our year of free access to that. So you really want to get on board. We're also trying to form some small groups, but we need a few more people to sign up for those. If you are interested or you have any questions, just let us know about that. The school has a number of things going on. There's going to be their annual dinner and auction coming up March 20th. There's information about that. It's not going to be a sit-in meal. Instead, it's going to be a pork chop drive-through dinner, and we're also going to have an auction so they are requesting items for donation for that auction. If you have any items that you would like to donate or businesses that you want to contact to have donations for that auction, just keep us in the loop. Let Mrs. Meyer know in the school office so that we know some of those things. We need to have them by February 22nd, though, in order to have them be a part of that auction. The school also has an open house Thursday, February 11th from 5 to 7 p.m. Make sure you let people know who are interested in our school. It is now in the open enrollment season. We do have a number of our classes that are full, but even if somebody wants to come and the classes are full, they can get in the waiting list just in case there are any changes throughout this school year or the summer. That way they still have their spot. Finally, the big school thing happening is the service today, uh, National Lutheran Schools Week. This is the kickoff to that event. We celebrate National Lutheran Schools Week every year, and it is a chance to give thanks for our school, for our principal, for our teachers, for all of our staff, for the kids, for all of our families, and to all of you for everything you do to help support that Lutheran school ministry here at St. Paul's. And so the theme of our service, Sent to Serve, comes from that theme of National Lutheran Schools Week this year. So you'll be hearing more about that. Final things in the announcements. Uh, there are a couple of different people who have thank yous or some other things going on. We wanted to let you know that Deb Landsman, a former member, passed away. There's information to be able to send a card if you wish to do that, if you knew Deb or her family. 
And then there's also information about Trudy and Lynn Grant who are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary on the 30th. Finally, if you haven't heard this by now, I, I hope you have. So this isn't the way that I tell you about it because I'm gonna keep it rather brief. I did mention last weekend in our services that I accepted the call to serve as pastor in Bethany Lutheran Church in Leesburg, Florida. It wasn't an easy decision, but it is a decision that I do feel God's peace about. And uh, it's going to be hard to leave here. It's hard to say goodbye to all of you. I thank God for the time that I have had here. In lieu of trying to do a really big party or anything like that, I think what is going to happen is that we will have a special recognition in our worship services on February 21st, which is my last Sunday here. Uh, we will also have that at the Saturday service. If you're somebody who goes to Saturday, don't worry, we're not going to forget you. But uh, we do want to have a chance to say goodbye. We do want to have a chance to give thanks and rejoice together. One other part of this is that uh, there's a request to put together a photo memory book. So if you have any photos that you would like to share or any special notes or words that you want to uh, put together, you are encouraged to do that. And there's information about that in the announcements bulletin. If you have any more questions or you want to talk about any of that, even if you want to cry, that's okay. But I do want you to know again that this is the Lord's ministry. The, the Lord brought me here. The Lord is bringing me someplace else. And the Lord continues to bless the ministry here at St. Paul's through Pastor Copen, through all of your leaders, through you. And he will bring another person here, another pastor, to be able to serve you, to be blessed by you, and a chance to rejoice. It doesn't mean that it's not sad to go, but we have to keep our eyes on our Lord and his work. And I know that you will continue to be blessed and continue to be a blessing in that work. As I said, we uh, open our worship service today, and it's not merely about Epiphany anymore. We are celebrating National Lutheran Schools Week, and so you will hear that theme in our readings and in our message today. We now begin with our opening hymn.
Dear friends, we begin our time together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, each week through the ministry of God's Holy Church and the power of His Word, the forgiveness of sins is offered to you and millions throughout the world. Let us now examine our hearts and see how faithfully we have received and carried forth this great gift of God. Let us confess our sin to God. Father, I have sinned against you. I know my sin is truly great, because I have known your commands, and still I do wrong and fail to do right. Even when I have confessed my sin, I forget that repentance means not only admitting guilt, but changing my life to put you first in all things, as your first commandment teaches. Forgive me for Jesus' sake, and make me new and whole again. Amen. As a called and ordained servant of the word, I speak God's good news to you, and I say that no matter how often or how grievously you have sinned, God's power to save is greater. His Son paid the ransom for your bondage to sin with His own life. His love purifies you and leads you into the greatest fellowship the world has ever known, His family of believers. Rejoice then. In His stead and at His command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God granted for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let us pray. O Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson today is Isaiah 55, 6 through 9. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson today is from Philippians 1, 27-29. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel now according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus approaches the end of his ministry, we have this interesting conversation where James and John, the sons of Zebedee's mother, come up to Jesus and ask about their own special position in the kingdom of God. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favor of him. What is it you want? he asked. She said, Grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, 
and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now continue with our sermon hymn, I want to walk as a child of the light. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and the actions of our lives be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, it's every teacher's worst nightmare. They have done all of the hard work. They got all of their lesson planning done. They are sure that they have prepared the best possible lesson for their kids to learn today's subject. They go through all of the motions, they are there in front of the class, and everything is looking really good until there's finally that moment when the lesson has ended and the teacher looks at the students and they stare back with blank faces. There's no light on upstairs, the teacher thinks. They just don't get it doesn't take a question necessarily to verify that fact. Sometimes you can see it plain as day on somebody's face. Sometimes it becomes clear in other ways. 
Imagine that you are in your family and somebody has broken one of the sacred family rules. And it has been stressed again and again how important these rules are to the family. And in anger, maybe a mom or a dad says, you just don't get it, do you? You don't understand what all of this is about. Or maybe there's a completely different circumstance. Maybe you are dealing with a particular struggle, some internal heartache or pain, and you've tried to explain it to a friend, to a family member, but they just, they don't understand. Why don't you just get over it? And in sadness and in frustration, you might say to that person, don't you get it? Don't you understand my pain? Don't you get it? It could pretty much be the question for our gospel reading today. It could be the thought that was on Jesus' mind in his interactions, not just with his disciples, but with one of the mothers of his disciples. Jesus, by this point in his ministry, has done so many things. He has made it pretty much crystal clear who he is. We're in the 20th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Way in the past is Matthew 16, when Jesus had that moment where he asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And there was no mistake about the answer to that question, right? You are the Christ, the Son of God, Peter said. And Jesus said, that's right. That's the answer. That's who I am. And we're almost on the doorstep in Matthew 20 of Palm Sunday of Jesus' final entry into Jerusalem, where he will be handed over, where he will suffer and die, and on the third day rise again. And by this point in Matthew's gospel, that's not a secret. Jesus has told his disciples exactly what's going on. They are on their way to Jerusalem, but even while they are on the way, Jesus continues to teach them about that ministry. But the disciples... They just don't get it. In our reading today, we hear this conversation that happens between Jesus and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. The mom approaches Jesus and and wants one small favor, just one small favor for her dear boys. Okay, Jesus says, what is it that you want? Well, I was just wondering if if James could be on your left and John could be on your right in your kingdom or, or the other way around. It doesn't matter, but I want them to be right there by you. That, that's, that's it. That's all that I want. We read that request and maybe you laugh. Maybe you're like, what nerve. What in the world is she saying? Can you imagine asking Jesus, oh, can can my family be like the MVPs? Can we be the ones who are closest to you from here on into eternity? Does she not get it? Does she not understand what Jesus is about? Does she not get what Jesus' ministry is about? We're, We're thinking that because the question is just so completely contrary to who Jesus is and to his entire ministry. But we say that from a much different perspective. We say it knowing everything about Jesus and the whole scope of his ministry and what he's about. If you zoom in closer to the context of this happening, you see that the immediate people of the story, they have kind of a different reaction. You see, when the other disciples hear what has happened between Jesus and James and John and their mother, they become indignant. They become angry. They're thinking, wait a second, don't you be given the best spot away in the kingdom, Jesus, without thinking about us, without thinking about our credentials, without thinking about our moms. Don't you want to listen to our moms and what they want for us too? It's borderline silly to us. It's not just that James and John's mother doesn't seem to get it. Those disciples themselves don't seem to get it. 
They're only thinking about themselves. They're only thinking about their own personal glory. What a mess. But before we jump too far ahead in the story, before we completely write off James and John and their mother and all of the rest of the disciples, maybe it's important for us to look in the mirror. Isn't it true that sometimes we don't exactly get it? Isn't it true that sometimes we are an awful lot like James and John's mother? We are an awful lot like the rest of those disciples in the sense that we think about me. We think about ourselves. We think about our own position. We think about our own glory. We want to be number one. We want to be on top. We want to have that power. We want to be in those positions of authority. We don't get it. We don't get it either. We might dismiss James and John, their mother. We might dismiss the rest of the disciples. But God's word makes it crystal clear that we are the same. We get God's law. He speaks very clearly to us and says, you don't even have to try to hide it. I know what sin looks like. And you are sinful in thought, word, and deed. That's sometimes a hard thing to come to terms with. We don't always like to confess that truth, but that's what God's word says about us. It's a hard word to hear, but we know that that's not God's only word. Instead, there is also that good news, the good news of the gospel that that is spoken not only to us, but in our story, Jesus speaks that same good news. See, Jesus isn't like James. He's not like John. He's not like their mother, and he's not like the rest of the disciples. Jesus says, I didn't come to be served. I didn't come to be number one. I didn't come here to get ahead in life. I don't care about positions. I don't care about any of those things. Do you know what I care about? You. I care about you, and I care about your salvation. And so I came not to be served, but to serve. In fact, I came to give my life as a ransom. I came to die. I came to suffer. All of those things that I've been telling to you, that's who I am. And that's what my ministry is about. And with Jesus, it's never just words. He doesn't just say that and then do something else. He would do exactly that. As you push forward into Matthew's gospel, he does enter into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And while they're ready to crown him king, Jesus, he accepts the title because he is the king, but he does not accept that worldly glory because the kind of kingdom that he rules over is not the kind of kingdom that those people were thinking about. His kingdom would come through his suffering, through his death, and through his resurrection. Jesus did all of that to serve you and me, all of us who don't get it. We do get it in the end. We do get not simply condemnation or Jesus' anger or his indignation. Instead, we get his forgiveness. We get his grace, his mercy, his unfailing love. We operate according to the world's standards. That's where our heads are at in this game. But Jesus comes with a completely different message, a completely different mission. And Jesus says, you having received this now, this forgiveness, this love, this mercy, I now send you out to be different, to be different than everybody else out there. You're not like them. I have come to serve, and now you go. I'm sending you to serve the world as well and to do it in my name. And that's what we do. That's what we do here at St. Paul's. We are sent to serve, and we do that in so many different ways. But today, in this service, we highlight the gift of our school 
in our ministry. As we celebrate National Lutheran Schools Week, we celebrate the fact that we are sent to serve. And we serve in a wonderful way through our school's ministry. We serve our community by offering them a place to come where their kids are taken care of, where they are loved, where they are given that first-rate education. Now, it's absolutely true that kids won't get every lesson that we teach them. Not every subject is going to be their favorite subject, and some of the things that they learn here they might forget later on. They might struggle with. They might say to the teacher from time to time, teacher, I don't get it. But we want them to get the fact that they are loved, that they are loved by us as a community of believers. They are loved by us because God sends us to serve the world, to love as he has loved us. And we do love them. We love them not simply by teaching them about these basics, but especially about God's love. We love to teach them about Jesus. Whether that happens in their classroom, through their time of devotions, through their Bible classes, whether it happens through our weekly chapel services, whether it happens through confirmation, whether it happens through other interactions that we have through them, teaching them not just a lesson, but teaching them in life as things come up, being there for them. We are sent to serve. And you are lucky to have teachers who love doing this, who are gifted at doing this, who are blessed doing this. And you have a principal who helps to shape them, helps to support and encourage them. You have pastors that love to interact with those kids and the teachers, and the school as a whole, and you as a community, you come together to help support the school's ministry in so many different ways. Sent to serve is who you are, and you have stepped up, and you are serving. And we thank you. We thank you for that service. And we wish that you could see sometimes on a daily basis some of the things that we get to see as we serve these kids. It is changing them. Kids come into our schools sometimes, and, and they bring a lot of different stuff with them. Maybe some kids didn't, didn't fit in so well with the public school, but they come into our classrooms, and things change. Their life starts to turn around. The parents say, I don't get it. They, they were struggling, but now they are succeeding. They, they were really feeling bullied before, but now they are feeling loved. They have friends. It's a wonderful gift that we give to them. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of energy. It takes our treasures, our talents, our time to do all of this. But we do that. We do this service. Why? Not because we're trying to get ahead in the world. Not because we're trying to get number one. Not because we're trying to make a name for ourselves but because of who Jesus is. Because Jesus is that one who came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came for the whole world. And as he sends us to serve, we must go to that same world to bring that message. Not just in our words, but also in our actions. Some of the things that we get to celebrate each year in our school, uh, off the top of my head, I guess I don't, I can't give you statistics, but I would say every year we average at least one new baptism at our school. One child, one family that hears about baptism as that gift that God gives to us, and they say, my kid's not baptized, but I want that for them. I want them to be a part of God's kingdom. I want them to have that assurance and love and God's grace to be poured into their lives. And we get to do that. What a gift it is to serve families in that way. What a gift it is to serve these kids in that way. But we just, we don't serve them. We 
through them, serve others as well. These kids, they came not just to be served, but to serve. You can already see the transformation take place. Because we do all sorts of things for our community through our chapel offerings. The kids support different organizations around our community. They bring together things for our food baskets and food pantry to support those who may not have enough in their own homes. They support things like Phil's friends, kids and others who suffer from cancer. They support Fortitude Community Outreach by bringing together different items so that those can be given to homeless people in our community. There's so many different ways that these kids help to serve others, and that's a part of how they have been transformed. They have been served by us, but they too are sent to serve Operation Christmas Child is something I talked about at the beginning of our service. And every year, that's something that the kids are always invited to be a part of. And they're excited about it. To think that these things that we have that might be small, they are such a big thing to those kids who receive them. And then especially to know that they don't just receive stuff. They receive that message of Christ, of Jesus the best gift of all. We are sent to serve. Jesus made it clear that that's the message we are supposed to get. Now it's true that sinful flesh is still with us. Sometimes we don't get it. Sometimes we start to think about ourselves. Sometimes we look inward. But each and every time we come to worship, each and every time we come to God's word, We get his good news. We get his gift of forgiveness and grace. The Son of Man came to serve us, to make us his children and part of his kingdom. And when we are part of that, our lives are changed. We're not just thinking about ourselves anymore. We too are sent to serve That's a message the world may not get. That's a message and a mission the world may not understand. But that's who we are. That's what we do. And we pray that through our ministries, the world would get it. Not simply get it in the sense of understand who we are and what we are about, but get Jesus. Get his gift, that gift of faith, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of eternal life. That's a blessing we have to give that the world gets to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, who is your Lord and risen Savior. Amen. As we begin that time of giving our offerings and tithes to our Lord, whether it happens in our in-person worship services, whether you send your offering envelope through the mail or drop it off at school, or whether you do electronic giving or use the text to give options, I hear Jesus' words in the gospel reading and they really strike me about how we as Christians live in such a different way. Jesus told his disciples that the Gentiles, the the non-believers in this world, act a certain way, that they lord it over one another, that they are always trying to be on top, to be number one. But Jesus says, that's not how you're supposed to operate. You do things differently. And I, Jesus said, the Son of Man, do things differently. I didn't come to be number one. I didn't come to be served. I came to serve you. I came to be the servant of all. And as Jesus talks about that change in attitude and how we think differently than the people around us, that has to come into how we deal with our finances, how we deal with our money too. And so we don't look at our money as our own. It's the Lord's. And we don't look at it as our our money as a way for us to get ahead, for a way for us to be better than everybody else. 
to be number one. Instead, if we are to be followers of Jesus, we look at that not just as a gift, not just as a gift for us, but a gift for others, as a tool, as a means to serve one another. And as we give our tithes and our offerings, those resources, those gifts that we have received from the Lord become a gift to the Lord's ministry to do His work. Our school is a big undertaking. It is a big ministry. But you have supported it. You continue to support it and say that this is an important thing because through it, we serve one another. We serve our families and our children who come and hear the gospel of Jesus. But we also serve the community. We serve the people around us, people who might be Christian of other kinds, but even those who are not Christian, who do not have the gospel as a part of their life. And we provide an education that's first rate, but more than that, we provide a time and a place for those kids to experience the love of Jesus through their classmates, through their teachers, and we give them that opportunity to hear that news of Jesus, to be a part of the family of God. And you do that. You serve those kids. You serve those teachers. You serve our community in that way. And we give thanks. You are a blessing to so many through your support. May God continue to bless you. Dear friends in Christ, let us now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, you have called us as your own, gathered us together, and enlightened us by your Spirit through your Word. We bring to you our prayer and praise, and let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for all the people of the world, that the epiphany light that shines the radiance of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, shine in the hearts and minds of all people, for those who are wayward and lost, and for those who rejected your call to repentance and faith. We pray you use our, our, in our words and witness to point to you that many more would follow faith, faithfully follow. Ever-present Lord, be with your church on earth and the congregations that their works serve and praise you and to be nourished by your word and sacraments. Bless those you have called in roles of pastors and church workers, that they faithfully speak and live your word of truth, and that the call to a repentant and faithful life in Christ be followed. Continue to raise up called servants and leaders within your church for your work and mission to continue, that many more may know you and follow where you lead. O Lord of comfort and peace, be present with those who face various needs in mind, soul, and body. We pray that you be with those hospitalized this past week, especially we pray for Mike Lergner, Mary Wheeler, Jeffrey Raby, for, Jean, uh, for Judy Ashby and Adeline Weber, and for those facing surgeries and procedures for Jean Gephardt, Nancy Mitzner, Chris Summerall, and Anna Warner. And for those on hospice care, we pray for Ruth Bogleman. Also be with those who continue treatment and healing at home. We pray for them and all those we name in our hearts now. Grant healing according to your will, 
Be with those who grieve that the assured promise of Christ's victory over death and the grave brings hope in times of hopelessness. For those who live in doubt, fear, and distress, extend your call of grace through your word and those who proclaim it. Lord, we praise your name, for you gave Jesus Christ, whose love for us compelled him to go to the cross, that by faith we are saved. Unite us in him and in our fellowship together, that in repentance we faithfully receive the gifts of life and grace he gives to us through his body and blood. Help us to draw strength, love, compassion, and mercy through you. O Lord, we bring before you the fruit of our daily labor. As we manage our financial resources, make us mindful that you are the provider of all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we do grieve with those who grieve, and we pray for Reverend Dave Bodorf and, and his wife Marilyn at the death of Dave's brother, Reverend Chris Bodorf, on, on Thursday. We ask your blessing to be with them and your comfort to be with them as well, O oh Lord, that indeed, that your word of promise would be with them, that because I live, you also shall live, and give them that hope of the resurrection and eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we do pray for our nation, and we indeed pray for our leaders. And we also pray for our communities, Lord, and those who serve them. them. But above all, Lord, we would pray for your peace. We pray that your peace would reign not only in our world and communities, but also in the hearts of all people. May the plans of the evil one be undone, and may you bless our nation with your divine guidance and your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for St. Paul's and all Lutheran schools across our country and the world as we begin the celebration of Lutheran Schools Week. We ask for your blessings, O Lord, and pray that you would bless our teachers, our parents and students in our school as they learn each and every day about their Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Gracious God, we pray for your peace and blessings in our lives. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We continue as we sing our closing hymn, Lord, whose love through humble service. Mm -hmm. 